Okay, line work. Okay, now let's talk about this today. This can be a uh, very kind of touchy subject with some people. Um, and I wanna just go through how line work works and give you maybe some ideas on how we can make this uh, a little bit less painful for you and help you start utilizing this in your workflows. Um, first, let's maybe just define what, what is line work, okay? Some people may not know uh, what line work is. Um, line work is basically um, you creating a database um, for our feature code library that then will dictate whatever software we use to basically connect these codes and um, automatically draw the lines for us, okay? So um, this could be our field software, it could be our office software, it could be uh, many different things, okay? But let's break down maybe first before we begin here, um, some of the pros and cons of line work. Um, we'll always start with the bad, so the cons, first in my eyes, um, just based on what I've seen with support and stuff, could be, um, could be confusing at times, um, trying to just keep track of drawing lines along with what you're already doing in the field um, can sometimes be confusing to users. Uh, there's also issues with uh, maybe mislabeling lines. We often get asked, you know, I mislabel a line, I use the wrong code. Um, I'm drawing a line with one code and I wanted it, to, wanted it to be another line. You know, what do I do? How do I fix that? And then the other problem we run into is just dealing with um, multiple lines. So, you know, if I'm in a situation where I'm doing utilities and I have several uh, communications lines, how do I deal with these lines? Can I measure multiple lines at once or do I have to run one line and run back and do the other one and so on? So um, those are some issues. Hopefully we'll address those today. Um, some of the pros for line work is definitely uh, makes things a lot more efficient on the back end of things. Um, as a drafts person, I used to do a lot of drafting and design. Um, a lot of times you just get dots on a screen and you kind of have to rely on knowing the site or an aerial photo or field notes to kind of collect the dots. Um, line work can ease that up a little bit for you to where it'll just kind of start the line work for you and maybe you have to make a few tweaks and make it look pretty but definitely makes things a little bit faster on the back end. The other bonus of that is you can also have it automatically run your, um, your layers and your line styles and things like that to, uh, to speed that process up. Um, the other thing is um, when you utilize, with Trimble software, you utilize what we call measure codes. Um, that's also a very uh, quick way to do line work and that's what I'm gonna show you today. I'll give you a little brief overview of our, of our work site here today, but measure codes can really make doing line work uh, very fast and very easy and very efficient for you. And then the last thing is just the visibility in the field. So one thing that I like about doing line work in Triple Access is it also draws the line work on my map screen as I survey. So I can see what I'm doing, I can see what I've done, if I have, uh, say, an aerial photo on the background um, in my map screen, I can also see how that line work overlays on my photo, and it's just a nice way to uh, kind of keep track of, of where things are at in my process out in the field. All right, so now let's just take a quick peek at uh, what our project is here, and I'm gonna show you a couple of different scenarios. So what we have here, uh, we're in a nice little park here in Wade Park, Minnesota, and we have a road here um, coming into the park, as you can see, that uh, has kind of this island in the middle of it with some uh, rocks and stuff like that. And there's kind of two roads on both sides. So um, we're gonna focus particularly on this scenario today, um, doing a cross section of this road and how to pick up this island here in the middle. Um, and I'm just gonna show you a few tricks, I guess. So first we're gonna look at how to uh, make measure codes um, a little bit more efficient for us and then how to use measure codes. Um, we're going to show you how to cross section this road, how to draw your line work. Then I'm also going to show you some cool uh, little offset line work features and stuff we can do to pick up curb and gutter um, that make things really nice. So um, I'm going to get fired up here and we will get rolling on this road and we'll kind of show you how we build this from start to finish. And then when we're done, we're going to bring it into Trimble Business Center. And we'll talk about the processing side of this a little bit as well. All right, so let's get going. Okay, now we're rolling here. I got my uh, road that I'm gonna do. I'm all set up. I'm dialed into the uh, Minnesota VRS network. Uh, I'm gonna do this little stretch of road here. I'm gonna ignore the island in the middle for right now. Um, I could set this up as part of my uh, measure codes template to create my cross section, 
but I want to keep it separate because I want to show you just a few uh, little things that you can do um, if you have multiple um, curb islands and things like that uh, to maybe just help pick some things up. And I just want to kind of show you a couple cool tricks too with the, uh, the offset lines in our uh, feature code library. So um, I have my metric code library set up. You can see here I have a couple of options. I have a road cross section one. I also have one called islands, um, which is basically like another road cross section. And then I also have one called islands. Whoops. There we go. Islands with offsets. And the difference is, is the road cross section is going to cover from my back of sidewalk, my curbs, ignoring the middle um, curbs, and then to the back of sidewalk for that side. My islands I also have set up to basically just do the edge of the pavement all the way across, curb and everything to the edge of the pavement on the other side. And then the offsets one is just a little kind of tidbit I'm going to show you at the end to show you how we can kind of run around this island too and, and, and not have to measure everything but still get all of our lines, okay? So the other thing I have set up here is if I go to my uh, road cross section and I go into my edit, uh, this is one cool thing with measure codes. You see, if I first have all of my um, template items listed here. It looks like I don't have the sidewalk, so I'm just going back a curb to back a curb, actually, so correction there. But you can see I have back a curb, then face a curb, flow line, bituminous edge. I do have a center line. Um, I assume these roads may have a little hump in them, but I'm just going to ignore um, that for right now. I might, for center line, just shoot the middle of this rock pile on the island just so we can kind of get this little kind of hump in the middle here but then on the other side it goes to edge of pavement flow line um, face a curb back curb so on you also see you have an s and e for start and end this is going to tell me when to start a line and end a line and then i also have an ssc and esc and that's start smooth curve and smooth curve so we get around this little curve on the end here um, we can sh I'll show you how this can, can kind of curve our lines for us. So those are our control codes. But notice um, to the left under my uh, template pickup here, it says how many elements do you have? So I really have um, two, four, six, eight, nine elements and then a zigzag uh, pattern. So what that means is um, there's nine elements to my template from back of curb across the back of curb. And then the direction being zigzag means it's knowing that I'm going to start on one side of the road I'm going to go across the other side of the road, then I'm going to move up and I'm going to go back the opposite way. And what it's going to do is automatically um, change my active button in my measure codes to go with me to where I'm at. So I don't have to keep looking where I'm at on the screen and keep tapping and I can basically just hit the enter button and the software is going to keep up with me. So let's first take a look at uh, the measure codes. So I'm back in my screen here. Let's go ahead and get started on this road. So I'm going to start right over here with back a curb. Now this first set of first set of uh, items here, I'm going to have to uh, put the little S behind it to tell it to uh, to start the line, and then notice that from one side to the other um, are just my codes, and then the other side has the number one behind it. So that's to differentiate between between different lines. So we're going to go up here. I'm going to grab this, go back a curb, start, hit measure, go. Oops, it wants me to give it a point name. I haven't done anything yet, so it's just kind of having me set up my first uh, thing here with my points. Observation stored. There we go. Now I'm going to go to my face of curb. Start. All I'm doing is double tapping on the screen. Observation stored. Okay, go to my flow line. Start. Observation stored. All right, so I've done my first uh, row of my cross section. You can see when I zoom in here, I've got all of my points here. What I can actually do is go ahead into the settings and we'll just turn the codes on and turn the names off. As you can see here, I've got all these on this side with the number one starting with the, the code uh, S as I work my way across, center line S, and then the codes on this side with an S. And that again is just telling me that I'm gonna start my line. So now what I can do is I can uncheck this little code box here and now I can move up to um, the next element in my road here, which is gonna be back of curb one. 
And now as I start doing this, it's gonna know that I'm just zigzagging across this road and we'll pick this uh, line work up in no time for this road. So let's go get started. Now, if you notice on my screen here, I'm starting to get my line work automatically um, drawn here. So to make this really easy to see, I'm just gonna turn my uh, codes off here and you can see my line work. Now I turned off my auto um, advance just to kind of show you that um, sometimes mistakes do happen. You can see my line work here on this one side back here. Uh, I messed up a couple of codes um, just to show you that we can easily fix this. So I'll show you this on the back end. You can certainly go in and fix this um, in the field if you need to. Uh, you just go into the point manager and change the code, but it's a little bit easier to do um, in TBC as well. So I just want to at least throw a little bit of air in there so we can see how to do it. All right, so I'm gonna continue um, and finish getting this road, and then we will take a look at the island, okay? Okay, now here's a scenario uh, where things get a little bit interesting, but with measure codes, um, it makes it pretty, uh, pretty easy to do. So. I can see on my screen here, I'm actually going to move up a little bit and hit this about, uh, say right here. And I want to kind of get this curve in. So this is where I'm going to do the start smooth curve command. So all I got to do is re-enable my little cold code box here. And I'm going to start on the back of curb, which is going to be right here. And I'm going to do back of curb SSC for start smooth curve. Observation stored. Then we'll go to face a curb, SSC, start smooth curve. Observation stored. Flow line, SSC. Observation stored. And then lastly, uh, bit edge, SSC. Store. Right, now I'm going to just hit these kind of points along the curve here and it should know then to try to push a nice smooth curve around there. Now you might get some weird little bumps in your curves and whatever. I've seen that many, many years even back trying to do stuff in CAD. You might just have to, if you get into a situation where that might look like it'd be problematic, just make sure you get more points than less points so it has more, uh, more vertexes or data points to, to push that curve through. But let's see if we can make this look good. So I'm going to deselect that. We're gonna go back to bit edge. We're starting to get kind of a nice little curve in here. Looks like I might've messed up on one of my uh, shots there, but uh, we can again go back in and fix that add a point in whatever we need to do but just for the sake of this video i'm just going to keep trucking along here but this is starting to look pretty good okay so we showed you how to do the smooth curve now again it doesn't look perfect but you know, I know all of you are savvy enough with CAD where uh, when you get into CAD, you can maybe clean that curve up a little bit, make it look a little bit nicer. Uh, I probably should have had one more roll points in there, but you can at least see um, how the curve command start, starts and stops these smooth curves. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this road, and then we'll kick back in and we'll show you ways that you can uh, tackle this island, okay? All right, we've got this road finished. Um, I did have a couple screw-ups on some of my codes. Um, I messed around with turning the template pickup on and off and forget things and push wrong buttons, but no worries because this is easily something we can fix in the field. Um, just a couple tiny mistakes. I'll show you how to fix that when we get back to the office. Um, just want to show you on my screen here, uh, kind of our finished product. 
So you can see we have all of our lines and we got this nice curve here. We got kind of a little swoosh back there. Um, the center line shots, again, were just the top of these rocks going down the middle. Now I want to go to um, shoot the island, okay? So you can certainly shoot the island by hand, um, just entering in codes by hand like some of you may be used to. If you want to use measure codes, I did make this um, islands code here, which is the same kind of thought process that I used um, for the cross section, being that I have a bit edge, um, a flow line, face curb, uh, back of curb. And then you can see I have some um, S uh, codes, some E codes to start and end lines. I have a code with the letter J in there, that's the join line. So the scenario would be if I just did a cross section of the curb on one side, okay, I would start my line. I would go around when I hit the little um, loops on the end there, you can see I have the SSC and the ESC um, commands here, which will draw my curve around the loop. And then when I get to the end, I come all the way back around and I kind of get to the end where I started. And if I hit that letter, uh, the bottom one with the letter J, that's to join it. So then that means I could join it physically um, to the first point of my line. I just hit the code with the J, put in the point number that I want to join it to, and it'll link those up. Now to save some time today, just because it's starting to get windy and the weather's getting a little breezy and cold here, um, I'm not gonna do that process because we've already kind of shown you how to do that with the cross section. However, I am gonna show you another kind of cool little trick here. So if I switch to my islands with offsets, you can see I have much less, um, a lot less codes here, right? So I have the CBL uh, 612S, you know, SSC, 612, ESC, and J. So what this is, is in your future library, um, you're able to uh, create a code. So this is um, curb line, so CBL curb line. And I have it set up to where all I need to do is measure the, uh, the back of the curb, okay? So when I'm in my feature definition manager making this, uh, this, this feature code, I can pick my line type, but then it can also add offset lines. So I don't know what kind of curb this is, but I know B612 is a, is a type of barrier curb we have here. Uh, meaning, you know, the six inches uh, uh, curb and a 12 inch uh, apron. So I just put in a B612 curb, looked up the specs, put my offset lines in to match the specs of that curb. If I have that curb on my site, I have all those offset lines that'll automatically pop in based on what I entered. And now all I have to do is shoot the back of the curb and it's actually gonna draw all the lines for me with just one shot. Now the only downside to this is you can see I have the little J code on the end that's highlighted there is that's to join it. The join command only works for the main line. So what I mean by that is if I shoot my back a curb all the way around, I'll get my flow line, my face a curb, and my, my bituminous edge lines. But when I hit the join command, it's only gonna join the back a curb line. So either shoot it nice and close to where your point started, or just know that you have to on the back end go in the office and just join those lines with like a polyline edit or something like that. Not a big deal, but something that we just need to, uh, to be aware of. So. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and measure in this island here now uh, using these fancy little offset codes and you can kind of see what that looks like, okay? Let's get to it. I'm gonna start with my uh, start code. Observation store. All right, and now I'm gonna go to just my regular code and we're gonna start drawing lines. And once I get a couple of these in, I'm gonna space them out a little bit more, but you'll see how we get this. All right, so now I'm back to the beginning here. If I want to, um, I can just shoot the point at the start again. Uh, if I want to close the line, I can now also use the join code. So if I look in here, uh, turn my numbers on, I can see that it was 251. So if I pick this button here, add that in, and then go space 251, it means to join it to that beginning point. All right, and just like that, my uh, island is complete. You can see on the screen that it joined it in. 
Now, one thing you're not going to see in the field is all of the offset lines being drawn. You're only going to see the single line. The access can't quite handle drawing all that fancy stuff in on real time. But what you'll notice when we get into the office is that uh, you'll be able to process the codes. You'll see all these offset lines comes in, come in, and then everything will have your you know, your back back of curb, face of curb, flow line, and so on. I only had to go run around the thing and measure uh, the back of curb one time. So. Uh, that concludes the field part of this. Um, I think we've got everything covered here. It took me maybe 45 minutes to an hour. I uh, had a couple little hiccups along the way. But uh, other than that, it was pretty easy to get this area done. And then we'll bring it back into the office and uh, show you what this looks like now on the processing side of Trimble Access. All right, now we're back in the office. I have the data all collected. I have it imported into Triple Business Center. And as you can see on my screen here, we've got all of our um, all of our point data, feature codes. We have our curb codes and everything that we've done out in the field. All right, so the next step is to process feature codes. I, um, one tip is just to make sure that the FXL file, your feature library, that that gets brought into TBC with your job file. If it doesn't, you're gonna get an error. Uh, but this is ready in here, so it's as simple as going to the survey tab processing your feature codes. Here's our project and we're going to hit process sources and bingo just like that we've got line work. So as we zoom in you can see here's our uh, back of curb, face curb, full line, bituminous edge. It's all colored. Line styles are all set. It's layered properly. Um, you can see um, as we get around our little curves and stuff everything looks. Here's kind of our little uh, loop de loop deal we did. And then the thing I really want to show you is these offset lines. So you can see we went through on that island, shot just the back of curb, and ended up getting our face flow line and our um, apron, our bituminous edge as well. So we can go in here and then look at the 3D view, and we can see, um, let's go down here. There's a busted out area here, but you can see how nice our uh, curb lines get. So pretty easy to do. Um, we did have one area. Um, that we identified in the field where we had a mistake. That was right here. It looks like we just miscoded a few things. So this was coded as um, face a curb when it should have been back a curb. So these are pretty easy to fix. Uh, just click on the point, open up the properties, just change it to uh, back a curb, enter. And all I gotta do is recompute the project and it updates our line work. Okay, and then the other mistake we had here, looks like I missed the flow line shot and I shot this as flow line. Um, again, I was kind of rushing through. So instead of FL, it's supposed to be BE and we'll just push this line through. We could go back and get another one, but it was a pretty straight uh, shot. So we'll go BE, enter and F4 to recompute and bingo, our line work is now fixed. Now at this point, um, what we could do is we could do a number of things, but typically we would just ship this off to CAD, probably along with the points, and we would be happy with uh, what we got from from there on out. So one last thing I could probably do if I wanted to get real crazy here is I could just make a quick surface model, um, show you what it looks like, and then go to the 3D view. And there you can see our um, surface model of our uh, road that we, whoops, that we shot out there. So again, line work. Very easy to do, very quick in the field. Looks nice on the back end of things in the office and I didn't have to spend any time um, sitting here and connecting the dots. Just simply bring it in, run your line work, make a few changes, do whatever you need to do with the data, push it off to CAD and you're done. So that concludes the video, hopefully you found it good. Uh, make sure you check out our YouTube page for more videos like this. Also check out our website, frontierprecision.com. On there you can go and find um, access to our learning lab, which we host all of our videos as well as all of our procedure sheets and, and different documents and things that you, you don't typically see free publicly, um, along with all of the free stuff. And also go to frontierprecision.com forward slash on demand. And there you will find our online on demand training. Uh, we have several classes up there. Um, several more in the works, some really good stuff there, including one in the works coming up specifically on feature coding. It'll be about four or five hour class 
everything you need to know about future code start to finish. So we will definitely include what we looked at in this video and so much more. So take care. Thank you. And we'll see you next time.